Bubble sort is a sorting algorithm. It takes an array with its elements in arbitrary order and it permutes them such that the elements end up in increasing order of values. They say bubble sort is a little bit like air bubbles popping out of a glass of water, hence the name bubble sort, but frankly I do not see the resemblance. Let me know in the comments below if you can. Bubble sort has just one thing going for it, it is very simple to understand and implement. In every other regard, other sorting algorithms are simply better. If you are interested in practically better sorting algorithms, check out our other tutorials. Find the links in the description below the video. Stay with this video to see how bubble sort works, including the lesser known reason of why exactly it terminates, how to implement it in the C language, and understand its best case and worst case time complexity. Subscribe to the Truly Understanding Algorithms YouTube channel if you enjoy our videos. Let us see how bubble sort operates. Bubble sort works by doing a number of passes through the input array, each pass bringing the array closer to being sorted. In each pass, it analyzes every pair of elements on consecutive positions. If the two elements are in the correct order, it leaves them as they are, and simply moves on to the next pair. If the two elements are in the wrong order, it swaps them, and then moves on to the next pair. The pass continues in a similar manner. Leave 8 and 9 as they are. Swap 9 and 7. Swap 9 and 3. Swap 9 and 6. The first pass is done. Since we carried out some swaps in this first pass, we must do yet another pass, to check if more swaps are needed and perform them as necessary. As some swaps were performed during the second pass as well, we must do a third pass. As some swaps were performed during the third pass, we do another pass. One swap was performed, and we do therefore a new pass. During this last pass there are no more swaps. We conclude that our array is now sorted. Therefore, there is no need for additional passes. This is how the bubble sort algorithm works, but an important part that is often overlooked is to understand exactly why it works. Let us now try to understand the why. It is easy to see, by making a working copy of the input array, that the only changes to the array the algorithm ever makes are swaps, which preserve in the output exactly the same elements as in the input. Furthermore, before the algorithm ends, there must be a pass that makes no swaps, and this ensures that the array ends up in increasing order of values. But what guarantees that the algorithm is ever done? Could it make pass after pass after pass, making some swaps along the way, without ever finishing? It turns out that bubble sort does terminate for all inputs, and this is the most challenging and interesting part to understand. We can understand why it terminates by marking the largest element, and analyzing where it ends up after the pass. The first pass makes 9, the largest element in the array, go to its final position in the sorted array. The second pass makes 8, the second largest element in the array, go to its final position in the sorted array. We are beginning to understand what is happening. With each pass, the suffix of elements that are in their final position, which we will call the green suffix, increases in size. The third pass makes 7, the third largest element, go to its final position. Incidentally, 6 also happens to hit its final position in this pass, so the green suffix actually increases in size by two elements. As the green segment increases in size by at least one element with each pass, it will encompass all elements after at most as many passes as there are elements in the array. After the green segment encompasses the entire array, the following pass will make no swaps, and the algorithm will therefore terminate at this point. Let us now implement bubble sort in the C language. We start with a function, called sort, that takes as input an array, called t, and its size, called n, as inputs. We use a flag, called done, that indicates whether the algorithm is finished or if more passes are needed. Initially, we must do at least a pass, so we initialize the flag to zero. We loop for as long as the flag indicates that we should do so. Before starting the current pass, we optimistically assume that this will be the last pass, and therefore set the flag to 1. We loop through all pairs of elements on consecutive positions by using an index, called i, that ranges from 0 up to n-2. The current pair of elements sits at positions i and i plus 1, and we therefore compare the elements at these positions. If they are in the right order, there is nothing to do, we just move on to the next pair. If they are in the wrong order, we swap them, and then move on to the next pair. As we have performed a swap, we set the flag to zero to make sure we make at least one more pass. 
we can slightly simplify the code above, by removing the if branch altogether, and keeping just the else branch, making sure to reverse the condition in the if statement. Let us now understand the time complexity of bubble sort. Each pass makes n minus 1 iterations, with each iteration taking constant time. Therefore a pass takes time theta of n. To find the time complexity of the algorithm, it remains to count the number of passes, which is the same as the number of iterations of the while loop. In the best case, when the input array is already sorted, a single pass is enough, as no swaps are performed during the pass. In this case, the overall time complexity is 1 pass times theta of n per pass, which amounts to theta of n. This best case time complexity of theta of n is also achieved when a few elements at the end of the sorted array are displaced, and moved forward by any amount. In this case, we require as many passes as there are elements displaced, in order to bring back the displaced elements to their place, plus one more pass to check that the array is indeed sorted. If the number of elements displaced from the end of the array is constant, then the number of passes is theta of 1, and therefore the time complexity overall is still theta of n. However, in the worst case, the number of passes can be as large as theta of n. This happens, for example, when the array is sorted in reverse order. In this case, each pass brings the next largest element to its final position. Bring 7, 6, 4, and 3 to their final positions, in this order. As there are theta of n passes, and each pass takes theta of n time, the running time overall is theta of n squared. However, this worst case running time is also attained when even just the smallest value in a sorted array is displaced and moved towards the end of the array. For such an input, the first pass moves the largest element to its final position, but the smallest value is only brought forward one position. The second pass moves the second largest element to its final position, but only brings forward the smallest value by one position. This pattern repeats with each pass. The next largest element is placed in its final position, but the smallest element only advances by one position. The n first pass moves the second smallest element to the second position, and also necessarily brings the smallest element to the first position, as there is no other place left for it. The final pass, the n, simply checks that the elements are now in the right order. As the number of passes is n, and each pass takes time theta of n, the overall time complexity in the worst case is theta of n squared. Bubble sort has an interesting asymmetry in running time between almost sorted arrays where the largest element is displaced towards the beginning of the array and almost sorted arrays where the smallest element is displaced towards the end of the array. This asymmetry in running time can be optimized away by alternating between the usual forward passes, whose role is to quickly bring the larger elements towards the end of the array, and a new kind of passes, whose role is to bring the smaller elements towards the beginning of the array, called backward passes. This optimized version of bubble sort that alternates between forward and backward passes is called cocktail sort. Leave a comment telling us if you would like a more detailed tutorial on cocktail sort, or other optimized versions of bubble sort. Subscribe to the Truly Understanding Algorithms YouTube channel, and hit the bell icon to make sure you do not miss any of our future videos. Check out our other video tutorials on sorting algorithms by exploring the links in the description box below. Leave a comment telling us if you enjoyed the videos, what could have been better, and what topics you would like us to cover in the future. Visit trulyunderstandingalgorithms.com to read these tutorials in textual form.